Risky Behavior. Yo, what's up, man? How y'all doing? Welcome to Risky Behavior. Thank you for joining me today. I want to say appreciations to all those that um, support the channel, those that are already subscribed. If you're not subscribed, feel free to hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. Also, as you come into the building, feel free to hit the thumbs up, like the video. And after the video, if there's anything you want to talk about, start a conversation. I do try to answer all comments as long as I can read them and comprehend. After the video, drop a comment. Let's get the conversation going. Um, this video is going to be on the Amanda Seals interview that she did with Shannon Sharp. I know, I know, I know a lot of people have been talking about this interview, but I have something that I noticed in the video that I don't think anybody else has really pointed out or took that angle. It's a very risky angle, but my channel is called Risky Behavior. So sometimes I like to say things that maybe other people are afraid to say. So everybody just talks about the normal Amanda Seals is crazy. Um, she's playing victim and everything. But it's something that she did in this interview when she was talking to Shannon Sharp about her experience with her white female teacher at her school and she throws this word racism around or racist around a lot in this interview and actually her and Shannon Sharp get into an argument during this interview because she feels he's trying to take up for a white woman that she feels is racist and so the question in this video that I am doing today is going to be as black people, why do we tend to label most negative experiences with white people as racist? And ask the question, I'm going to play this interview. Try not to pause it too much in between. I'm not going to play the whole thing because it's not my content. I'm just simply reacting. And I, I wanted to use this interview as an example because this is something that I see all the time. And I will be back with my final thoughts. And I do have, I, I got like one story example or whatever. But anyway, let's hurry up and go ahead and jump into this video. There were a lot of parent-teacher conferences with you, huh? Yes, but not for what I... Well, what do you think they were about? Uh, your excessive talking, maybe the doodling. Um, Funnily enough, no. You know what the parent-teacher conferences were about? What? Amanda is sticking up for other kids in the class. Amanda is correcting me. Like, I had a teacher, Ms. Schwenk, who... Had, who called a conference because she was talking about Aboriginal art. Mm -hmm. And she said that the, she stood in front of the class and said, you know, that the Aborigines are a Stone Age people. And I was like, ma'am, there are Aboriginals yeah. <laughs> alive right now. Right. Like, they are a part of civilization. Like, right. what are you talking about? And she's like, well, no, you know, what I mean is that they've never advanced. And we in a classroom in Orlando, Florida. <laughs> so like if we don't check this type of stuff, right. it's gonna just continue. So I was that student. Like I was the kid who was always raising my hand and um, just wasn't easily appeased by simply just someone being an authority. Right. And my <laughs> was I always I love this because when when she called my mom and said, you know, I, I'd like to set a conference up because I have some complaints about Amanda. My mom said, well, you know, that's interesting because Amanda has some complaints about you. <laughs> <laughs> and so they came to the meeting. It was my mom and Mr. Wright and Miss Cersei is all black people at Dr. Phillips High School in Orlando, Florida. And this lady sat there and she and actually you and Mr. Wright had the same bill. And Mr. Wright was like, all right. So, um, you know, are we here to discuss Amanda disrupting the class with her talking? And she was like, no, Amanda doesn't disrupt the class with her talking. She actually helps the other students out. He's like, oh, okay. So is it about her grades? And she's like, 
actually, no, one of her art pieces is featured in our exhibit at the yeah. library. And he's like, so what are we here for? And she's like, well, you know, she corrects me in front of the class. And these three black people are like, here we go with this racist bullshit, you know? Pause for a quick second. I want you to um, keep in mind that when they asked this teacher about Amanda Seals as a student, she gave her a couple of compliments. She said that her work was very good and that her work was being featured. And she said that she helps the other students. So she gave her a couple of compliments. She only complained about one thing. And that is the correction of her in front of other students. That's really what it is. We're in Florida in the 80s and the 90s. And um, But let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Okay. If you Do you think she would have felt equally as offended if a white kid, because I'm assuming this teacher was white, right? Mm -hmm. If a white, widow, a white child would have corrected her, I think most teachers would feel some type of way if a child corrects them. That's not for me to surmise. I'm just saying that my experience was this lady giving wrong information. Yeah. And I'm allowed to correct her. Now, this is the same lady who tried to accuse me of stealing. And when a white girl said, no, Amanda didn't steal it, I did. She was like, well, I think both of you need to go to the principal. Right. I'm in Orlando, Florida, which is a notoriously racist state, Florida, in the 90s. And I'm talking to you about a white woman who is speaking about black people, indigenous people in a country where those same indigenous people have had all of their land taken from them by former criminals that were sent there from England. And she is calling them Stone Age people. And I, as a black girl, the only black girl in her class, am correcting her. But I, 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 my thing is, you're right. She possibly misspoke or she didn't know. I guess my question to you is, why do you even feel compelled at this juncture in this interview? Why would you even fee be feel compelled to try to because I don't want her? because I'm not defending. But my thing is, is that what I'm trying to say, most adults, when kids correct them or speak, feel some type of way. This is not unique to a black, white or white black. Okay. That's all I'm saying. Okay. I'm sorry that you took it that way. But I remember when I was growing up, my grandparents and parents said, hey, kids, stay in your place. Adults are speaking. That's all. I don't maybe that didn't happen where you were forming in Orlando, Florida. But where I grew up and when I grew up, kids did not correct adults. So I apologize if you th thought it came off as combative. No problem. Let's get into your acting. You've been at this game for a long time. You started in 1993 as a child actor. Was that something that you always wanted to do? Um, not that I always wanted to do. I mean, I started dance mm -hmm. very, very young. Um, in 1989, I was on Disney. Okay. Well, not I was on, on. Sorry. In 1989, I went to an audition for Disney okay. uh, because they had something called the Sparkling Christmas Spectacular at uh, Disney World in Orlando. And my mom was like, I think you should go and audition. So I went and auditioned and I made it, which I was not expecting to do. It was like 1500 kids dancing <laughs> and I made it. And I'm like, OK. And even though you're going to probably have an issue with, with this, they were racist. So when I was at Disney yes. and I was in the situation at Disney, I was there as the only black girl okay. and there was a whole crew. It's like 12 of us, 12 of us. Um, and so I was called an N word right there while I was there. And uh, I was also bullied while I was there because I was told that you're only here because you're black. You can't really dance. You're just here because you're black. So don't get any ideas. So that's what I'm being told by the other children. Does that suffice as racist to you or would you want to call it something else? Is that just kids being mean? That's Yeah, the kids. So let me ask you a question. As a child, do you Ooh. never said anything derogatory? You was just this model citizen as a child? I mean, children. Now, we're talking children, not functioning adults. Now, if you told me the adults, parents were telling you this, or the execs or people that are in charge of Disney are telling you this, I could agree with it. But at 89, I'm, I'm, you're probably eight, nine years of age. Maybe younger. 
So you have no problem with the children that were cursing out Ruby Bridges and the Little Rock Nine? You think I, no, that no, was just? You I, have, do you think that was just them being kids? Kids can two things can be true. Kids can be kids and not function as an adult and things can be wrong. And sometimes when kids say things, they're repeating what they heard their parents say. They don't know it's wrong. So what about the children who are receiving it that know it's wrong? Is that doesn't does that not? matter? Yes. Yes. So yes. if I'm so if I'm if I'm 10 and I'm receiving that treatment and I know it's wrong. Does it make my experience of it less valid? It doesn't valid, make it any less, less valid. valid, no. So that's what we're here to talk about, my experience. Yes. And so my experience is that I experienced that and it was difficult. So that's the valid part of this. I'm not here to protect those people because it's irrelevant so, to the conversation. So when I'm talking about me being on this dance show, I was there and it was, um, there was other kids there who were actually really kind and they had been in like the business. And so, for instance, uh, shout out to Melissa Salamone, her grandmother, um, they were, <laughs> well, they were not uh, rich. And now, I'm going to stop it right there. Um, I don't feel like there's a need to go any further. Um, but as you, you can see, the question for today is, is there a need to label and why do we as black people label every negative experience with a white person as racism? And I think it takes away from what that word really is. It's because if you take every opportunity to use that word, then when you really need to use that word, it holds no weight. It has no more power. Right. And so for Amanda Seals to just sit here and say that this teacher is racist without any concrete um, proof and then be upset and would accuse you of saying, well, and you would defend a racist. Well, it's like, well, no, I'm not. I'm paying attention and I'm listening to your story. And I am simply saying that you have not given me any proof. Right. Because when you use a word like racist to some of us, and especially those of us that pay attention and listen in conversation is when you use a word like that, it makes us feel like wait a minute, did I miss something in this story that you was telling? Right? Because when I first seen that, I actually had to rewind. Um, I had to rewind it, right? Because I, you know, I'm looking at the video while I'm like just cleaning up around the house and stuff, right? So I'm thinking that, wait a minute, because I, I, I'm hearing her and Shannon Sharp go back and forth. And so I'm thinking that I missed something. I'm thinking, well, wait a minute. Why did she say this teacher was racist? Right. And then when I rewind it and I re listen to it, then I'm like on Shannon Sharp's side where I'm like, well, hold on. What you're saying does not classify this teacher as being a, a racist. I had black teachers. I probably had a couple of white teachers that I could remember my whole life, you know, and my black teachers did not tolerate you to do that as well. And when they stated that they had a problem with me interrupting class or doing something that I wasn't supposed to do, I could never use a word like racism against them. And so what it seems like is she's just using this word as a scapegoat um, whenever someone she doesn't like that is white that ticks her off. She just says, well, oh, they're a racist. And I think it's unfair and I think it's a slap in the face of people who have actually experienced it, because for you to say that this teacher gave you these other compliments, but because she had this one thing that she had an issue with, she's a racist or because you and a student had a situation where something may have been stolen. And the teacher says, well, hey, you know what? You both go to the office. Which is what most teachers would do. I don't want to deal with it. You both go to the office and the reason it stuck out to me is because as a black person I see it all the time all the time I never forget I was um I used to work for a company I was in food and service delivery and I was talking to one of the other delivery guys one day it was after a shift and he was new there so he didn't have a key fob to get into the building. 
And so I said, hey, bro, do you need to turn your stuff in? Um, I can let you into the building with me. And he said, yes, yeah, sure. So we started up talking. I asked him how he liked everything. How was his route? How did everything go? And he said, yeah, he started talking and then he started complaining about some things. And then he started talking about this customer that was in his way when he went to go make his delivery that wouldn't move their car. Right. And he said, yeah, yeah, you know, old racist A, B. He called her racist A and the B word. And all of this only because she wouldn't move her car. And that was odd to me. She could have been a butthole. She could have been having a bad day. Um, she could have just been being lazy. But he went straight to races. And I have a whole lot of examples like that from my life that I've heard my people use and call people racist for nothing. Just because they had a negative um, experience with them. And... So that's why um, I chose to do this video today. Um, it was just the one thing that kind of just stuck out to me in my mind that I feel like other people did not point out. Because what's crazy about it is she used that word a lot in this interview. And yet every person that she says that really screwed her over, the people that fired her, the people that got her arrested, um, Outside of that party, the people that really did damage to her, guess what? They were not white. They were black. And yet she carries around this, I'm fighting against racism torch. And yet the people that did her dirty were black. And I just felt like everything she was saying was ignorant. And she just throwing around words and she just wants to be a victim so bad. And she just wants to be like she's fighting the good fight. So bad. But the people in your stories that gave you opportunities. A couple of them was white. But all the stories of people screwing you over and doing you bad. They was all black. And I'm not here to say who's better white or black or anything like that. What I'm trying to say is. Stop throwing that word around because that word has real power to it. And people that are really going through it, that need people to fight for them, that need to change. They're the ones that need to be using the word. Not because you and someone got into an argument or a disagreement. You just, oh, they're racist. And I think that's just an ignorant thing to me. I just don't agree with it. And now I'm about to get out of here, man. And with that being said, I do want to give my um, final thoughts to this video. It is crucial to avoid stereotyping people based on their skin color and ethnicity, as this can lead to unfair assumptions and biases that hinder genuine understanding and connection. Even as a black individual, it is important not to automatically label any negative experience with a white person as an act of racism. It is essential to appreciate each situation with an open mind, considering all variables and perspectives to understand the root cause of the issue at hand. By refraining from jumping to conclusions based on stereotypes or preconceived notions, individuals can foster constructive dialogue, empathy, and mutual respect. Ultimately, promoting harmony and cooperation among people from diverse backgrounds. Embracing a mindset of openness and critical thinking allows for more nuanced and productive interactions, leading to a greater understanding and unity in a multicultural society. Thank you. I appreciate you all. Risky, out. Risky behavior.